I mean, I guess we can slowly start. Hmm. So hi, everyone. Welcome to the exercise class. Um, so today, the topics I'm going to cover in the exercise class are not directly yet related to the content of the lecture. Um, but so some of the um, some of the properties and tricks we're going to discuss in this exercise class are will be relevant for the next lecture. And generally, they just interesting facts from uh, usual usual uh, computation theory and then also related to the uh, quantum information theory. So the first topic I'm going to discuss are uh, unitary T designs, and then I'm going to talk about the properties of the swap operator. Uh, so to start talking about unitary T designs, let us first consider um, a classical setting. So suppose that we have, uh, and in classical setting, the analog of unitary T designs are spherical T designs. And they serve the following purpose. So imagine that you have a polynomial. Uh, yeah, some polynomial. Let's say f in d variables, like let's say x, y, z, so on. Say d variables. Uh, and what you want to do is to compute its average over the d-dimensional uh, unit sphere. Over d-dimensional unit sphere, which I'm going to um, name S of Rd. And uh, the first solution to this problem is, of course, just to take this polynomial and integrate it over the sphere and normalize. So this is kind of the first thing that we can try to do. So we just integrate um, f over the sphere, so say ts. Uh, of course, when when we have a big polynomial and many variables uh, to integrate this, we need to go to the spherical coordinates of the corresponding in the corresponding d dimensions, and this can be a lengthy process in which, in the end, you would get to integrate the function, which has a lot of sines and cosines, and so on. Uh, so this is uh, this is this way always works, but it's not necessarily optimal. Uh, what you can also do is use these mysterious spherical T designs. So what spherical T design does is we just take a set of points on the sphere, and then we sample the polynomial over the set of that points, uh, take the mean value of, all, um, of the value of the polynomial in that point, and uh, boom, we get actually the correct solution of the average. And basically, we choose a set of points on S of Rd and compute the mean. And this set of points for which this, this approximation works is called um, spherical T design. Uh, what is T in here? So this works for polynomials, uh, which are have homogeneous terms. So f of x and so on is homogeneous with degree at most t. What does it mean that it's homogeneous? So uh, when, when I take each term and sum up all the degrees um, of all variables in that term, the sum should not exceed t. So for example, um, the following 
polynomial of two variables, say x, y, equals x squared, y squared minus x cubed y plus x to the power of 4 uh, is, um, has, is homogeneous with degree 4, basically, because if we take each, each of these terms, then here we have the degree 2 plus 2, here we have the degree 3 plus 1, here we have the degree 4. And uh, let me now write the definition of the spherical design properly. So what we have is this polynomial of the degree t, so which maps points on a sphere to the real line. Um, and x, which is a set of points on the sphere, is a spherical T design if 1 over the power of x sum over all x and x, pt of x, or x, equals to this integral. So here, d mu is a spherical measure in d dimensions. So you can always use, for example, um, spherical coordinates for simplicity. So let us now look at what are the uh, such spherical T designs for the case of three, uh, three dimensions. So when we are trying to find an average of the function on a sphere. Okay, so this is a unit sphere. Three dimensions. Then, um, actually, uh, intuitively, how you can think about the sets of these points is that these sets of points have to be evenly spaced. So, so basically, um, it must be these usual solids uh, in 3D. So, for example, for t equal 3, the spherical 3 design for the case of three dimensions would be the tetrahedron. Or for the case of t equals 4, it will be the cube. And for the case of t equal 5, it will be, I'm not sure if I want to draw this, but this will be the dodecahedron. And then basically you take the, um, the vertices of the solids and then um, you normalize them such that they all are placed on the sphere. And, uh, and then you can evaluate function only at this point, take the average of that set on that set, and then you will get uh, the correct answer. This seems to be very magical, uh, but in fact it works. And basically, the more complex function is, the uh, like the higher degree it has, the more complex solid we have to use. So the more points we need to sample on the sphere. This is also quite intuitive. Um, so as an example to see uh, 
and to convince ourselves that indeed this scheme works. So I propose to take this um, polynomial in three variables. So since it is in three variables, um, yes, it is in three variables. And we want to average uh, it over a sphere in three dimensions. Uh, and let us take the concrete form. So it's x, x to the power 4 minus 4 x to the power 3y plus y squared z squared. So we'll do three things with this polynomial, or rather I will just like show you the results of, of these three operations, and then at home I would, I would advise you to write a Python script or mathematical script to, um, to convince yourselves that this indeed works. So first thing that we can do is exactly the first solution that we propose here is to just integrate it on the sphere. Um, to do so, uh, we, we just need to go to the uh, spherical coordinates. So x would be cosine phi sine theta, where phi and theta are the usual polar angle and the angle with the z-axis. y would be sine phi sine theta, and z will be cosine theta. Like in the usual spherical coordinates, you would have also here the r, uh, the radial component, but since we're integrating over the sphere, over unit sphere, r is equal to 1. Then we can rewrite this function in terms of theta and phi. Uh, and what we'll get, I believe, is this expression. Theta sine phi um, plus sine squared phi squared theta squared theta. Um, and then to integrate this over the sphere, you just introduce the usual in the spherical coordinates. Um, you just separate it into integration over theta and phi, so from 0 to pi, 0 to 2 pi, uh, f of theta phi, and also the uh, sine theta, which comes from the uh, Jacobian. And then if you take this and if you integrate it either by hand or plug it into the program, then you would get that this is approximately 0.267. So this was a just a brute um, calculation by hand. Then another thing you can do is uh, make use of this spherical designs we just learned about and choose a say this is the first thing we can do then the second thing is to choose a four design so basically um, define a dodecahedron uh, and then normalize it such that its points are on the sphere on the unit sphere and then evaluate this function um, at these points and calculate the mean. And basically, what you would get by doing this is approximately 0.267. So I would advise you just to write a short Python script uh, because I think in Python it's 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 uh, much easier to uh, define these geometrical things. Uh, 
Um, yeah, I will also share my version of the Python script in the solutions. Uh, but it's a good way to see that indeed the result of this integration and the result of just evaluating um, this average using the for design gives you, um, with a good approximation, the same answer. However, it is important that we choose a for design here, not a three design. So, for example, if you choose uh, a three design, so if you just take a cube and fit its points onto the sphere, and then um, evaluate this function over the points of this cube, then the answer that you would get is uh, point two, 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 approximately. So it's very close, but not exactly, yes. Um, sorry, I think I made a, might have made a mistake there. Yeah, sorry, it's a good, thanks. Actually here it's to supply a translation. Thanks. Sorry, yeah, this is a two, three, and four design. Yeah, it's actually uh, easy to check because here we have um, two to the power two um, at, uh, vertices, T we have two to the power three ver uh, vertices, and there we have two to the power four vertices. So um, I will not present the proof of this here, that you will need, indeed need two to the power T vertices, but that's a good way to check. Okay. So, and here uh, we clearly see that a three design is not enough to, uh, to approximate it with. Um, okay, so this was all very classical consideration. Maybe it will be useful to you uh, if you do this kind of computations in the future, but now we're still in a course which is called quantum information. So you're probably wondering how is it related to the quantum. Yes? Um, as far as you know, is this just spherical harmonics at all? Uh, spherical harmonics or also in the quantum field, or in the quantum field, I'm sorry. Uh, maybe it's in the quantum yeah, prob I'm not sure. I'm not sure if they're related at all. Perhaps they form a subset of the polynomials that you can, you can define. Uh, for which, of course, this, this construction would work, but I'm, I'm not sure there is a direct connection. Uh, okay, so now to the quantum case. So in quantum case, the spherical T, the analog of the spherical T design is a unitary T design. And, and here, instead of the sets of points on the sphere, we're going to use a set of unitaries. So before we had evenly spaced points, now we have like evenly spaced unitaries. And such sets of unitaries can be used, for example, to evaluate um, average fidelity of a channel um, or the action of the channel and so on. Uh, and they're also very useful in uh, quantum tomography. Uh, okay, so we'll also talk about polynomials here. But before we talk polynomials on a sphere, and now we will talk about polynomials over entries of unitary matrices. Uh, so a set of matrices, unitary matrices UK uh, from K equal one to big K is called a unitary T design if the following holds. So one over power of K 
uh, sum over k p t t of u k equals um, integral over the space of all unitaries of the size d by d p t t of u d mu u. Let me explain. Um, of course, you see that this expression is very similar to the one that we've written there for the usual classical, sometimes spherical uh, t designs. Uh, but let me explain. So what is PTT of UK? So this is a polynomial uh, which takes as an argument the entries of the matrices UK. And it has degree, so it's, it's homogeneous and has degree at most uh, t in components of UK, uh, matrices UK, and degree at most t in components of UK dagger. So hence, there is a separation TT. And here it's the same, but for an uh, arbitrary matrix U, uh, which comes from the set of uh, all matrices of the size D by D. And here we integrate over a Haar measure. So this is a measure which is evenly distributed over the whole uh, set of of the matrices of the size, unitary matrices of the size d by d. Okay. Uh, and it is proven that these construction, uh, the set of uh, matrices, the unitary t design, it exists for all values of t and all dimensions d. So whichever size of the matrix I choose uh, and whichever or whichever degree of the polynomial I choose, I can always find such set of matrices. So uh, just to comment on that, actually that's just an existence proof. Uh, finding concrete minimal sets is still an open problem for each case. Uh, okay, now let us take that definition and prove that it is um, that it is equivalent to the to the following. Yes. 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 Um, so basically it's, uh, yeah, this is in a way how, how our measure is defined. So for example, how our measure has the property that it's invariant under applying any unitary. Um, so basically whichever unitary you apply, uh, it would still, um, the how our measure would still be the same. Yes, but uh, whether it's with the regards to the trace distance. Um, The measure we choose for the set. Uh, sorry, I don't quite. What was the second question you asked? Yes. Yes. Um. I mean, so in this case, the even the even the spacedness, let's say, is defined by the means of Hall measure. Does this answer the question, or like, what do you mean? Like, we can use every measure to define the even spacedness. 
Um. Okay. Okay, maybe just come in the in the in the break and yeah, we can clarify that. Yes. Yes. So imagine imagine a, a huge function, just the usual function of the of of the complex some complex uh, variables, right? And then now imagine that these complex variables are the elements of the unitary matrix. And then uh, you can have, like you can have the elements of the unitary matrix U, and then you ha can have elements of the unitary matrix U dagger. Uh, um, so I, I, I say, so that means that um, basically, if I look at each term in a polynomial, um, the the total degree of the elements which belong to the matrix U K should be at most t, and then in the same term, the total degree of the elements which belong to the um, to the matrix U K dagger should also be at most t. Actually, we'll see like an example of this in a moment because. Um, let me just formulate the statement that I want to prove, and then, uh, and then we'll see what exactly is meant. So, what I want to prove is the following. So, suppose that uh, I have a set of UI uh, matrices, which form a unitary one design. then the following should hold. Like it's equivalent to the following. Sometimes this is used as a definition of the one design in particular. D, U, dagger, D, U, U. And so we'll prove this after the break. And then you'll see also what, what exactly is meant under this polynomial as an example. Okay, the break will be five minutes, so we will, I'll be back at um, 37. Yeah, 12 minutes in. Okay, let's restart. So, yeah, we want to prove the statement. To prove the statement, let's write each of the unitaries um, explicitly. So, in cat bra notation, so what we get is the following. So, say ui is sum over kl ukl. I, this is a KL element um, of the ETH matrix. KL tends the product sum over MN, UMN, I. Okay, this should be transpose, which means that this is NM. And then this is just a star, MN. Okay, um, should be equal to uh, integral over the set, uh, the, the space of the matrices of the solids D, D by D. Um, and here U, I write it again in the same form. As I wrote, as I wrote, all uh, UIs. It's going to be UKL, U, and M star K um, L M N. 
as a bolt. And integrating over the DU. Okay, so in fact, when I integrate over um, over use, it can also be decomposed as integrating over their elements. So actually, it has no um, direct impact on this uh, on this matrix element. So basically, from this, I can conclude that uh, since I want this to hold for every k, l, m, and n. What I would have here is one over uh, n sum of these equals this integral again uh, u k l u n m star DMU U. Uh, yes. And basically, what this both of these sides are are actually this is a polynomial of the degree maximum a degree exactly one in the elements of the matrix U I, and a degree ma uh, exactly one in the elements of the matrix U dagger. So this is basically uh, P11 of UI. And by the same logic, this is just P11 of U. And this is equivalent to the condition that we have for um, our, in our definition for the unitary uh, T design where T equals one. Like in fact, this kind of statement that you have on top holds not only for one design, but also for T designs. So for example, alternatively, you can define any T design as the following, where instead of UIs, we would have UI to the power T, which means I need to take a tensor product of UI T times tensor product UI dagger, T equals integral U of D uh, U to the power T tensor product U dagger to the power T D mu of U. Okay. Uh, so another statement that I'm gonna make about one designs in particular is that in fact uh, any orthonormal basis in, um, in the space of the matrices of the size D by D is a unitary one design. So uh, we're gonna consider in let's say 15 minutes or so uh, an example of generalized Pauli matrices for the case of n qubits, uh, and we'll show that um, that they can be expressed, uh, they can be used to express, for example, the swap, swap operator. Um, and while doing so, I'll also explain how how we can also use the fact that every unitary one design is. Uh, uh, can be constructed as just an orthonormal basis. But uh, I was trying to find a simpler pr simple proof of this statement in the literature. Unfortunately, all the proofs uh, require either um, integrating over a Hall measure, which requires representation theory, or uh, introducing some, uh, some other more complicated notions. So I decided not to uh, go into this direction. So uh, 
a brief comment on why we need this unitary designs. So, for example, um, one can evaluate the um, average uh, estimated fidelity of the channel. So, for example, you have a noisy channel, uh, which is, um, yeah, maybe I can even briefly show you uh, how this is constructed. So, for example, you have a noisy channel which uh, tries to emulate the application of some unitary V. Uh, but it's noisy, so it doesn't do it with, uh, with, uh, with perfect precision. So let me quickly write it here. So basically, we just have this channel lambda of rho, which what we want it to be is just applying this unitary v. And then, for example, if we apply it to the state 0, 0, then the fidelity of this channel compared to the unitary um, that we wanted to emulate would be so 0, 0, we apply our channel to zero, zero. Then we apply the reverse of the V. Uh, yes. And we expect to get one. However, if the channel lambda is noisy, then we will not always get one. Uh, and then to estimate the fidelity of this channel on the whole set of unitaries, uh, what we need to do is First, take uh, um, on a whole set of unit. Sorry, on a whole set of states that you can apply um, this channel to. You need to first consider uh, some random states, which we usually emulate as taking some random unitary out of set of unitaries and uh, applying it to the zero. Uh, and then you want to somehow average uh, this. So average this over the whole set of unitaries. So in, then the estimated fidelity value over the whole set of states that you can apply it to can be expressed as, so uh, we evaluate it on this kind of random state. So this is uh, zero u dagger and u zero. Uh, we still apply this reverse v after we apply the channel, and we apply the channel to u zero zero u dagger. And then we integrate this over the whole set of unitaries, so all possible unitaries that we can apply to get this random state. Okay? Uh, now, in fact, if you write, um, write out this expression in terms of the elements of the matrices U, um, you would get a polynomial, which would be P22 polynomial in the terms of this matrix U. So it, it would have at most degree two um, for the entries of the matrix U and at most degree uh, two for the entries of the matrix U dagger. Or well, you can already see it from here because U appears two times and um, yeah, U, U dagger appears two times and U appears two times as well. And then uh, instead of evaluating this integral, for example, what, what you can evaluate is just choose a two unitary, uh, unitary two design, uh, which is in fact a four qubits. For the case of qubits, it is known, it is a Clifford group, uh, if you're familiar with that. Uh, and then just evaluate the value, uh, this integral uh, at these, uh, only for the elements of these two, of this two design. And that will give you the correct answer. So this is just to 
um, kind of show you why these unitary T designs are useful in quantum information theory. Yes. Yes. Ah. Yes. Um, so, okay, so the construction that we use here is, so um, I have a noisy channel and I want to know how it works for all states. And uh, then the way I model all states is, or the way I model like a random state that, that I take out of the, this pool of states is I take, uh, instead I take a random unitary out of all set of unitaries and I apply it to the state zero. And this is kind of uh, my way of saying, oh, I take a, a random state out of the whole pool of states. Uh, yes, so, so then basically what I'm considering is not a state zero here, but any state. Uh, but then I want to know how my channel performs for, um, for what is the estimate, what is the estimate of how well my channel performs. For that, I need to average it over all possible entries that I can choose this way. And since I choose them by randomly taking out a unitary and applying it to the state zero, I average it all the whole set of unitaries. Does it make sense? Okay. Okay, now let me talk about the swap operator. So suppose I have two systems. Um, which are described by Hilbert spaces H A and H B. And it also so happens that these systems are of the same dimension. Okay, uh, then I, for these systems, say I have the basis I, A in, in the system A, and a basis J, B in the system B, then I can define a so-called swap operator for these two systems. So what does the swap operator do? It exchanges the states on these two systems. So for example, if in, a, uh, in the beginning we had state ij on ab, it will exchange it with j on a and i on b. So this is swap operator which will label as p21. And in a matrix form, given this representation, we can write it as just sum over i j, i j on a, tends the product j i on b. Okay, uh, so this is how we define swap operator. And so swap, the swap operator is a very useful tool in, um, in more advanced quantum information theory, which allows us to do so-called swap trick. So the swap trick is basically when you have a trace of the product of two operators, and then you want to kind of separate these two operators and put them in different spaces instead of acting on the same space, then you can always use um, 
the swap operator to uh, separate them. So this is called a swap trick. So the swap trick is the following. So I have two operators, M and N. Then tra trace of M, N equals trace of M uh, tensor product N, P, Q1. So we can just uh, calculate the trace by putting them into different different uh, subspace sorry different different spaces separate spaces and adding the swap sometimes that helps okay uh, let us prove the statement so we just write m and n in their uh, eigenbases so m is sum over alpha m alpha by alpha alpha n is sum over beta n beta psi beta psi beta uh, the swap in this case is the swap between these two eigenbases so it's sum over alpha beta um, phi alpha psi beta tends the product um, psi beta by alpha. Okay, now let us uh, calculate the value on, on the right hand side. So what I will have is I'll need to introduce more labels uh, which will be Greek letters if you don't mind. So sum over gamma and delta phi sorry m m gamma phi gamma phi gamma um, tensor product n delta psi delta psi delta this was tensor product of m and n and now I add the swap alpha psi beta tensor product psi beta by alpha okay there are a lot loads of scalar products here so what, what are we left with Okay, so we need to take the scalar product of phi gamma with phi alpha, which only works if gamma equals alpha. So, sorry, this is only non zero if uh, gamma equals alpha. Same here, psi delta, psi beta means that this is non zero only when delta equals beta. Okay, so then we are left with trace sum over alpha beta um, m gamma is now m alpha uh, phi alpha phi alpha ah, sorry phi alpha phi alpha psi beta sorry you can see comes from here and tensor product n beta uh, psi delta is now psi beta and here we have phi alpha okay so what we get is sum over alpha beta I take it out of the trace um, m alpha n beta and here, in fact, we have uh, the trace of the tensor product, which is the product of the individual traces. And here we would have the scalar product of psi beta phi alpha 
and here we'd have phi alpha psi beta so here we just have the modulus of psi beta phi alpha squared okay uh now some space here this was the trace of m tensor product n p to one now let us calculate just the trace of m n so the trace of m n would be the trace of some for alpha beta m alpha and beta uh, phi alpha phi alpha psi beta psi beta and here this due to the cyclic property of the trace this would give us just again modulus of psi beta phi alpha squared and this is equal to what we have found there which means that this is equal to trace m tensor product n uh, p to one. So this is a sw called swap trick. I think Marco will use it tomorrow in the lecture. So that should be useful. Okay. Now, what are the other properties of the swap operator? Uh, another property of the swap operator we're going to look at is that, in fact, this equation here when your eye is a unitary one design is actually equal to the swap operator. So I'm not going to prove it here. Uh, one way to prove this is if you, if you know representation theory and know how to integrate over the R measure, then you can just take this expression, integrate that, and you'll get the, um, the swap. Uh, Another way to kind of see it is to take, um, to convince ourselves that this indeed is true, uh, is, is to take the unitary one design for the d-dimensional system for the case where d is two to the power n. So basically when the system can be represented as n qubits. Then use the fact that I use another statement that I stated before, which was that every orthogonal basis, unitary basis, um, in in a space of, of unitaries of dimension d, will be a unitary one design. Uh, in particular, we can take an example of generalized Pauli matrices for n qubits. And taking generalized Pauli matrices and plugging them in here, we can in fact directly compute this uh, expression and um, arrive to, yeah, of course it's not going to be n, but not this n, at least let me maybe think that this is some m, or what would be the good letter for this? m, n, p, so q. Q where it's for Q qubits. Maybe okay, then it can be. Uh, okay. Generalized Pauli matrices, we plug them in here and we will get out the swap operator. Fine. What are the generalized Pauli matrices? So the usual Pauli matrices for one qubit are the matrices X, Y, Z, and I will add another matrix which is the identity. So this is what forms the Pauli basis for, for a qubit. 
if we want to find a basis for, let's say, um, Q qubits, then each member of this basis would have the form, um, let's say, sigma, um, sigma 1, so on, sigma 2, so on, so on, sigma Q, where each of these elements, sigma I, would belong to the set X, Y, Z, or identity. Okay, and the set of such uh, all possible combinations of these Pauli operators on n qubits would give us this generalized Pauli basis for, uh, sorry, for Q qubits. Now, let us do the following. Now, we want to convince ourselves that indeed however many qubits we take, uh, if we plug, um, if we plug these matrices into, uh, into this expression here, so we take this as our set UI, uh, we'll get out the swap operator between these two between two systems each one of which uh, each one of them which has q qubits so q qubits here q qubits here and this will perform the swap between these two systems uh, what i'm going to do now in class is to to show that this holds for uh, for the system of two qubits uh, and from that, actually, you can immediately find a way to how to generalize this for an arbitrary number of qubits. So, uh, so for the two qubits, um, ah, sorry, uh, two qubits, I meant like here we have one qubit and here we have one qubit. So I'm considering actually the case when q equals one and then I get the swap operator, which means that my Pauli basis is just the usual Pauli basis still. Okay, uh, so let me compute this. So basically what would I get is the following. So I want to compute the sum of the tensor product of UI and UI dagger. Uh, I have the with the Pauli matrices, generalized Pauli matrices, I have the advantage that actually they are also Hermitian. Uh, right? Yes, they're they're all Hermitian, which means they're equal to its own their own dagger. So what I need to calculate is the following: x tensor product x plus y tensor product y plus z tensor product z plus one the product one. Okay, this is very doable. Okay, so what I get here is X, X, uh, Y, Y, Z, Z, and then I just, uh, the identity by identity will give me the identity anyway, but in four dimensions. Okay, the first term will give me, so zero, 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 zero. 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, these are zeros, plus, so here, uh, say I take out the i out of here and the i out of here, this will give me minus here, it will be 1, 
minus 1, minus 1, 1. And this will give me zeros here. Uh, 0, 1, minus 1, 0. Uh, sorry, and here will be minus. Uh, 0, 0, 0, 0. Ah, sorry. Here I will get 0, minus 1, 1, 0. Here are zeros. Plus uh, z by z will give me just this. Okay, and the identity. Okay, well, what do we get out of this? Uh, we have these terms. Um, ah, sorry. So, in the upper law, we will have 0 minus 0 plus 1 plus 1, 2. Uh, okay, here we would have Zero, 0, here would have 0, minus 0, minus 1, plus 1, would have 0, uh, 0, 0, 1, 2, 0, 0, 2, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 2. Uh, so it's going to be 2 times this thing. Uh, okay, so indeed we got this, uh, okay, I think maybe I made a mistake here, yeah. I think this might be P over the dimension of one of these systems. So basically, uh, what we're, so we use four matrices, so we need to divide this by four. And so here we would have one half. Uh, what is this matrix here? Indeed, it's the it's the swap matrix because it takes zero zero to zero zero, it takes one one to one one, it takes um, zero one to one zero, and one zero to zero one. So uh, since we know how all the um, basis states are mapped into each other. Indeed, we uh, we confirm that this is the correct matrix. Okay, uh, how does this consideration help us when we're considering uh, a larger string of of the poly matrices uh, for uh, when we're considering this unitary? So imagine just the following consideration. So say that. Uh, for each string, just take an arbitrary string and then fix all components except for one. And then this one, and then vary that component. And uh, look at the corresponding, um, and assume that you're acting on some computational basis state on, with, on both systems. And uh, just consider the states of the qubit uh, for that subsystem, uh, which you're varying. And when you're varying it, you either, you either can, it can be either an identity, it can be an X, it can be a Y, and it can be a Z. Which means that uh, for, for that particular uh, subspace of two dimensions, this argument will still hold. Because uh, while considering that subspace, you fix all the elements in the rest of the subspaces. And then for the qubits uh, corresponding to that subspace uh, in this system and in this system, uh, they will be swapped because this will be the same operation that you do here. And then uh, by considering pairs of 
um, by considering each qubit and sorry, by considering every poly operator in the string, which um, in the end gives us the UI, uh, like here, and fixing everything else and then varying it, you'll see that the um, the cumulative action of all possible variations of, of this operator will, will in fact uh, just give you that the corresponding qubits in this system and in this system, so in, the, in this case, for example, the second qubit in this system and the second qubit in this system will be swapped just because of that derivation that we, we have there. Uh, and hence, uh, you kind of the, the total action uh, of, of the sum of all these uh, generalized poly matrices would be that this, this action would apply for each qubit in the chain, and hence uh, this would apply the total swap operation between uh, these two systems of Q qubits. Uh, so this was just a description of the proof in the words, but in the end it's, uh, it's just a application of this proof uh, Q times. Okay, uh, uh, so there is also one more exercise in the exercise sheet, which is about uh, epsilon packing. So um, how do you define a set of quantum states such that they're tightly packed in the sense that uh, such that the distance between them is not more than epsilon? Uh, but this will this Marco will, will elaborate on this exercise tomorrow in the tomorrow's lecture. So uh I yeah, I don't have now the ground to, to do it. Basically, this will be the material of the next lecture. Okay. Uh I think this is more or less everything I wanted to tell you today. Uh thanks for listening. Questions are welcome. <laughs>